know how many times the nation of Israel was attacked by Palestinian forces in 2021? I did some research, and in the month of April, so one year ago, month of April 2021 alone, the following attacks occurred. On April 15th, one rocket was fired from the Gaza Strip. On the 23rd of April, 36 rockets were fired from the Gaza Strip, of which six were intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome defense system. Let's see, on April 24th, two rockets were fired from the Gaza Strip. On the 25th of April, five rockets were fired from the Gaza Strip, and on and on it goes throughout the year. Israel is under constant threat from surrounding nations in the Middle East, but they have a defense system called the Iron Dome. Have you, has anyone heard of the Iron Dome? Anyone heard of that? It's a pretty powerful name. It's almost uh, prophetic, you might say, because uh, we all know that Israel has a protection system uh, beyond the Iron Dome, which we would call uh, the God of all creation. That is the perfect Iron Dome, but they, they, they do have this Iron Dome system, and it actually covers the entire nation of Israel, this Iron Dome. And the Iron Dome system is a series of anti-air batteries that have, each of them have about 20 missiles in them, and they are able to intercept rockets fired on Israel, and they're even, even able to intercept artillery shells fired toward Israel in midair. And I actually watched a video on YouTube of the Iron Dome system in action, and you see all these uh, shells and rockets headed toward Israel, and then the Iron Dome shoots up its missiles and takes them out in midair. It's really something special and incredible. The system uh, operates with these highly advanced missiles called Tamir Interceptor Missiles that are able to intercept high-speed uh, rockets and artillery in midair, which is state-of-the-art. That's, that's, these missiles and shells are moving so incredibly fast. But this system functions through a radar system able to detect targets within 70 kilometers of each Iron Dome battery. So they have these batteries along their borders, and it's able to detect anything moving in the air within 70 kilometers of, its, of each battery. And it's these, the, the, this system is not perfect, but it is able to intercept about 90% of the rockets and artillery fired on Israel, which is pretty effective. So just as Israel is protected by this Iron Dome defense system, so we as Christians find ourselves protected by our own defense system, which is God Almighty. Who the Bible describes as our watchtower or our strong tower. And oftentimes we're reminded in the scriptures that God is our strong tower. And the psalmist writes, in him I take refuge. I run to that strong tower and I'm safe. And that is our Hebrew word for today called mitzpah, and it means watchtower. Mitzpah in the ancient Hebrew means watchtower. It comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 31, verse 49, which says, it was called mitzpah because he said, may the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are away from each other. Interesting. So mitzpah is meant to indicate the concept that God will watch over us and protect us if indeed we are his people. Of course, if we are not his people, he does not promise to watch over us. But from the Hebrew word, we see that this concept is really meant to be seen in the context of relationship. Relationship with God. This is a relational term. In fact, often friends or lovers, when they're going to be split apart, they'll wear a necklace with half of a heart on it, right? And then the other person has the other half, and they like lock together, right? Oftentimes, some of those will actually say mitzvah on there. And it's a declaration of that relationship, in that the relationship is binding, even though they are apart from each other. So that, that really is the big concept of mitzvah, is that we're a watchtower 
we're accountable and God protects us even when we're here on earth and he's in heaven. But it's also speaking of relationship between people. So mitzvah between people, that there, there's mutual accountability and there's, there's mutual uh, protectiveness there. And they're, they're holding each other to this relationship even though they're not right next to each other at the time. Anyone in here ever been in a long distance relationship? That, that is the kind of uh, mitzvah you might have is where you've, you're agreeing that you're together even though you're apart. Same thing with um, a soldier who goes off to war. My grandpa actually married my grandma when, what, she was 19, 20? Yeah, 20, and he immediately went off to war. Now, they made a binding marriage agreement, right? So there's a mitzvah there where they're holding each other accountable that, yes, we've made this agreement, we're married, we're going to be faithful to each other, even though he's off in Korea in the war and she's back in the States waiting and, and uh, growing in her walk as well. So praise the Lord. That is what that means. And really what you see here is even more deeply, I think, a covenant agreement. The Israeli Iron Dome system was set up with certain costs and agreements and contracts with businesses and military contractors and suppliers and all these various agreements that allowed it to function and be uh, protecting the country. In, in the arrangement, the, the system then protects Israel from danger under these contracts. We as Christians are then also in a covenant relationship with God. It's a sort of written contract, written in his word, in which we've signed on the dotted line saying, yes, I'm a follower of Jesus. I accept this covenant arrangement. I am in. I'm a follower of Christ. I sign on the dotted line. I'm a Christian. I'm part of this. And I, I agree to live by the New Testament commands and believe in Jesus and receive his grace. My part is to believe in Jesus and to obey God's guidance. And God's part is to then wipe all my sins and be my father and I'm his child. So it's an agreement, you know, between two people. It's someone like a marriage, you might say. You marry your wife or your husband and you're making this binding agreement to love them, to share your finances, to, to not cheat on them, to discuss, to, to, to discuss decisions you make with them, right? Like, oh, I, I better check with my wife before I make that decision, right? Remember, I invited a guy to preach here, and he said, I gotta check with my wife. I thought, it's a, it's a good thing. And then he said no, so. <laughs> she must have said no, so. But we agree to, to, to be in relationship, to discuss decisions, and so on and so forth. And marriages can fall apart over time, even leading to a contract cancellation in which divorce takes place. So when we enter the grace of Jesus Christ, God agrees to wipe away our past sins, he becomes our Lord, we become his servants, and God agrees to be our mitzvah, our watchtower, our protector, in which he watches over us. Yes, watchtower. A watchtower in ancient times was a powerful defensive structure. It's usually constructed from stone or blocks, and a soldier or several soldiers would climb the stairs or the ladder inside the watchtower, and they would be up top the watchtower in a protected uh, bastion in there, and they would be able to see out for miles and watch for enemies. And then if they saw enemies, they could fire on them from the uh, watchtower. They could fire their weapons, their arrows, their guns on them from there. Similarly, the Creator is our protector as Christians. He is our watchtower, watching our lives from above, protecting us. Is a, I kind of picture a watchtower and like a growing, beautiful field, like a field of wheat. It's growing, and God's in that watchtower protecting us from enemies who want to sow, sow seeds and weeds and attack and burn our crops and stuff. The Lord's up in that watchtower watching over us as so we plant the crops and as they grow. And the Lord is then in that watchtower protecting us. And indeed... I've had enemies in my journey as a Christian, and when I pray for those enemies, God deals with them. It's kind of interesting. God will deal with my enemies as I pray for them and leave the judgment to him. Now, if I take judgment into my own hands, then God's like, fine, you, 
you're doing your thing, I'm not going to get involved. And we, we never want that because I, it's not my job to be the judge or the condemner, the executioner, whatever it is. I leave it to God and he does more than I could ever do. He's my protector. He's my watchtower. And I think a powerful prayer when we're afraid or we feel demonic attack against us is to just turn to God and say, God, I take refuge in you. You are my strong tower. And I just see myself in that tower safe and protected by God. Remember that. Keep that in the back of your mind. Lord, you are my strong tower. I take refuge in you. There are powerful words that we can speak in the name of Jesus. And they're, they're very powerful in the spiritual realms. One of those is refuge. I take, that's like becoming part of that, making that one with myself in the name of Jesus. I take refuge in God. God is my protector. I, take, I hide in that strong tower, which is my Lord. And in doing that, I'm just surrendering, right? I'm surrendering for God to be my protector. And oftentimes, we're always trying to take control, right? And make everything happen the way we want it to. Instead, I think it's powerful to say, I step back. Lord, I take refuge in you. You're my strong tower. You protect me, please, God. And he does. That's surrender and submission to him. And he certainly does work in our lives, doesn't he? In so many ways. How many times in your life have things worked out just as they should? Even when it seemed unlikely that it could ever work out just right? How many times have you been in the right place at the right time to get just what you needed? That is the truth. God is orchestrating our lives by being a watchtower over our lives. And he's watching and he's orchestrating events. You could say he's the conductor and we're the musicians. He's guiding us as we play. So, but it's important to understand God is not just like a, an iron dome. He's, he's not just a missile system firing on our enemies or something. He's much more than that. He loves us. He's a friend to us, a savior to us, a father to us. He is a beautiful God to us. And he is in that covenant relationship with us. And it's just built on something deeper than just a written agreement, okay? Just like a marriage, there is a sort of written agreement there, but it's built on so much more than that. It's built on love and relationship and connection and, and, and also an intellectual assent to them and them to you. It's just a beautiful thing. But it's also a contract, and there's agreements. And, and just with us, with God, God agrees to do this, we agree to do that. And in the context of Genesis 31, we see this play out. Here we see in Genesis 31, Jacob and Laban. Jacob works for Laban. Jacob actually married Leah, his daughter. But the problem is Laban it keeps cheating Jacob out of stuff. He, he just spends years cheating Jacob over and over. But, but God always gives Jacob the upper hand for some reason. So, so one day God says to Jacob, leave this place. I don't want you to work for Laban anymore. He says, I'll protect you. But Jacob leaves without telling Laban he's going. And his wife Leah actually steals some of, I'm sorry, it's Rachel. It's his wife Rachel steals some of his stuff as they leave. So Laban finds out and he's mad and he chases after Jacob. But God then spoke to Laban in a dream, telling him, deal fairly with Jacob. Because I think Laban wanted to kill Jacob. So <laughs> in Genesis 31, uh, Laban and Jacob argue back and forth. But eventually they decide to work it out. And, and they make an agreement between each other. They, they build a pillar of stones as a written agreement to say that they were at peace now. And that though they would be separate from each other now, in different directions, one going one way, one going the other, they would swear before God that they would stay true to each other in the agreement, even when they weren't together. Much the same occurs when two businesses work together. They sign a contract and agree to help each other. I remember when I served in an internship with the Salvation Army in St. Louis at a treatment center, we had it entered into a written agreement with a local radio station, K-Love, to do a Christian rock concert together. And it was great. I got to meet uh, all these <laughs> famous Christian rock musicians, and it was a great show. But it was all predicated on this written agreement that we would work together as two nonprofits to kind of help each other and to help 
Christians draw near to God. We mitzvah with each other. We watched over each other in that agreement. In a similar way, God watches over us as a lover, guarding our hearts to help keep our hearts true to him. And God agrees to love us and guide us and be with us in our struggles. Often we see friends who have that heart necklace like I talked about, and one friend has to leave and takes half the heart and a separate necklace and it's bittersweet. And it's a reminder for each of them that their friendship uh, must continue and that they're going to honor that. We then are in a relationship with God. And our faith in Jesus Christ makes us part of the written covenant that if we follow Jesus by faith, God agrees to wash away our sins and give us eternal life with him in paradise. Are you in faith today? I'm in faith today. I'm, I'm in the agreement. I'm in I'm washed in the blood of Jesus. I'm in 100%. Thank you, God. What a great agreement this is. If you were to look at all the promises of God in the New Testament, you'd say, wow, this is a good deal, right? It's like if you find a house that's real cheap and it's real nice with lots of land, you're like, whoa, this is a good deal right here. It's kind of like that. You're seeing an incredibly good deal in the New Testament. There's also challenges, though, to let go of sin, to live in purity. You know, there's certain things he calls us to as Christians to serve him, to follow him. You know, uh, we talked about the parables of Jesus in the morning. So there are challenges and expectations there as well to grow, to, to love others, right? That's the biggest thing, probably, is to love others, love our neighbor. But there's so many promises, so many good things, so many blessings that it's like, wow, this is a good deal. Take the deal. You know, that's, that's what I say to you tonight. Take the deal. So here's also a warning, though. If we were to renounce Christ, or we become unfaithful to our commitment to get drunk and commit sins or commit adultery, and we violate that covenant, it can also be canceled by God. And God can say, you know what? You've broken the, the arrangements of this contract. You know what? You're no longer part of it. Now you can always repent and get back in, but you can fall away too, so stick with it. We, we made that relational agreement with God in Christ. And I just, I take it one day at a time. Just, I keep walking with God. Every day I wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I'm a Christian today. I know who I am. I'm walking with Jesus. And he's always with us then. And he loves us. So in conclusion today, God is our mitzvah, our watchtower. He watches over us if we obey him. He agrees to lead us, guide us, love us, and grow us through our lives all the way to eternal life with Christ in paradise forever. In Jesus' name.